Hi, my name is Matt Dudley, and welcome to Sunrise, Florida, and this is my 540 ATM. It's 96 by 36 by 36, and it has a 300 gallon sump in the filtration room, which we'll see in just a moment. The system itself is a total of about 700 gallons after the rock, sand, and equipment displacement. It has a coast-to-coast -coast overflow on it, which I built myself. It has eight return lines on it that run from two tandem Reflow Super Gold Dart 4300s. It moves right now, after the head loss, about 7,000 gallons an hour through the filtration system. It is powered for flow inside the tank with two uh, four MP60s, and that's the only flow inside the tank is the returns and those MP60s. The sump, we'll get to see it in just a minute. It used to be a 300 gallon tank. I re-engineered it so I could have a sump out of it. I wanted a large volume of water, and I was able to re-engineer that sump and parlay it into this system. My old system, which housed a lot of the fish that um, are here now, from my tangs to um, a few of the amphias, uh, was a cube 300, and I moved everything into this tank. This tank I happened upon in the Keys when I was down there. It was in a dive shop, and they just had a plastic diver in it with some bubbles coming out of it. And I couldn't believe it when they were going to get rid of it, and I made an offer for it, and here it is today. I did all of the woodwork for everything. I'm just getting to the point now where I've started adding corals back into it. Um, a few from my old system and quite a few from friends that have kept some frags from me from my old system. I did have quite a few angels in here when I first started this tank up about two years ago. And in the last eight months, I have switched over and moved all of my angels out, started putting corals in, and now became pretty, pretty much a grass dominated tank. There are five tamarin, red tail tamarins, there's white tail tamarins, there's yellow tail tamarins, there's lots of the regular leopard grasses, there's African leopard grasses, ornate leopard grasses, radiant grasses, there's quite a few, there's mystery wrasse, there's quite a few dominations of different species of wrasse. I've always had a love for the wrasse since a friend of mine, Tony Vargas, introduced me to the wrasse family. That was years ago and I fell in love with it from then and that's all I've dreamed of is having this tank just full blown with all my wrasses and having a nice family for it. The lighting and filtration on the tank, it runs eight Radeon G3 Pros. It has uh, four sets of 48 inch T5, so it does have eight 48 inch T5s on it. It does have a 50 gallon frag tank system that we'll see built into it, all tied into the same water volume. We'll see that in just a moment. Pretty much uh, all the equipment that you see here is all Ecotech and Bubble King. Uh, with the exception of the two reflow pumps, which I will be switching out within the next week or so for the uh, Bubble King Red Dragon 230s. I have the Bubble King skimmer, and when I was looking for the DC pumps enough to match the reflows with the DC version, those were the only uh, uh, volume of pump that I could get that would move this type of volume that I have for this system. I did want to go and stay with the Ecotex, but they just didn't quite have enough volume for what I was running in my system. I've redone the rock work structure probably about seven or eight times, each time tweaking it and getting it to where I want it. It started out with about 1,500 pounds of live rock um, and a little bit of Tonga branch in the display system and about 500 pounds of live rock from my old system that I put into the sump to help the bio load as things switched over from my old tank. And it seems like each time that I rework the rock work and everything, I always go with less. It seems to be a much more artistic look when you go less is more. There's 400 pounds of live sand in here. It gives my wrasses plenty of room to be comfortable. Everybody has their own little, ski, own little spot, their own little home. All the sand gets turned on a regular basis with all the wrasses that I have. And there isn't really any dead spots with all the flow that I have. Um, that's one thing that does stay nice with this tank is it does have a good turnover on the sand and usually it's pretty decently white. I don't get a large growth of algae growing on the bottom. The filtration room we built behind the tank here. The filtration room, basically, I had to build a whole new room in what was my garage to house all the filtration for it. That was one of the requirements that uh, I was able to meet by putting it in the wall and having an in-wall display system is to be able to have that fish room to give me the room to lay everything out. I am a tall person and I always hated going when I saw a nice system and having to bend down and look at it. So I made sure that when I built the stand and the system for this 
It was nice up and I could see everything right at my eye level. Um, this system, as I mentioned, does have the automatic water change running on it. Outside this wall here, there is a 300 gallon uh, container that has natural seawater. This tank is filtered, uh, is ran with natural seawater, not mixed. It does switch out 15 gallons a day from there. And I run a 30 gallon denitrator that again, I built out of acrylic and built the setup for. It sits to the end over here. And this system over here, I'll open it up and give you a peek in here, not that you really want to see, but you can see it's loaded with bacteria in there. That denitrator there runs. It doses pure methanol for nitrates, and it doses strontium nitrate for the phosphates. You can see methanol runs from here as a dose, and strontium nitrate runs from here for dose. The denitrator itself, it runs four cycles a day. Those cycles last six hours. What happens is the tank is filled with water at the moment. The dosers kick in with the methanol. It runs about a four and a half hour cycle, and then the strontium kicks in, and then it runs for the remaining time. Then a pump kicks on and flushes that 30 gallons back out into the system and refills it with a new 30 gallons. And when this 30 gallons comes into the system, it's basically stripped of all nitrates and all phosphates. So it comes back in with zero across the board of everything. Combine that with my automatic water changes of everything, I, and everything runs for the last year and a half, even with my large fish load, runs with zero nitrates, zero phosphate. But it does have 150 gallon that I can make in a 24 hour period. Um, you can see equipment wise, it has uh, two 150 uh, watt uh, Emperor Aquatics UVs that run on it. Um, these are the UVs that are here. I ran them in parallel so that I would get more production for it. So water goes through both of them equally. It doesn't channel series from this one to this one. Um, that wouldn't give you the best production overall for the volume of the system. Uh, this does take out around 98% kill rate. So basically you would have 2% water coming out of this that without a kill rate. And if you put that 2% over into the other one, the other one would only be taking out 98% of the 2% that came from this one. So it's much better to run this on a parallel system and let this one take out 98%, this one take out 98% of the amount of volume that goes through them. Again, my name is Matt Dudley. Thank you for coming in my home and seeing my tank today. It's been my dream to get this up and going, and it's almost to the point where I've dreamt and had that picture of where it would be. It's getting there slowly and surely. Thank you again for coming and seeing everything.